Father God, we come before you this morning. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, throughout this week, Lord. We thank you for the strength that you've given us, Lord, to endure, to press on, Lord God. We thank you. You are our victor, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We worship you. And Lord, we just come before you. We humble our hearts before you. We exalt your mighty name, Jesus. For you alone, you alone are worthy of all of our worship, Lord. You are worthy of all of our praise, Jesus. Father, this morning we just pray for our church family, Father God. Any needs, Lord, that are represented here this morning, Father, we pray that you will meet, Lord, every need. And we thank you that you are able to meet every need, Father God. Lord, we uh, just pray for those who are sick in our church family, Father God. Not only in our church family, but also those who are viewing in this morning, Lord God. We just thank you that, Lord, it is not an accident that we are here this morning. It is not an accident that they have tuned in this morning. But we believe that you have a divine word for us this morning, Lord. And we just praise you, Father God. We pray for your healing upon those who are sick. Lord Jesus, those who have been infected with this COVID virus, Father God. We pray, Lord, that you will bring healing, Father God, over our land, Lord. We pray for our elders, Lord, Tamama, Tinama, Tua, Tua. Father God, we remember them in prayer. We just pray, pray that you will continue to give them peace and strength, Father God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We also remember this morning our lead pastor, David, and, and Father Tua, Lisa, Lord God, that you will just continue, Father God, to give them vision, Father God, to help us, Lord to help them to discern and to understand these times, Lord, and just give them understanding, give them wisdom, Lord, as they lead and guide us in this season of ministry, Father God. We thank you for your guidance, Lord. And we just pray, Father God, also we remember, Lord, our sons and daughters who are in the military and those who are away for school. And we especially remember uh, uh, AJ, Father, who is in Samoa. We remember Lomovii this morning, Lord God, that you also be with him. Brother Sam, who uh, we're thankful that he's here with us this morning. But we ask, Lord, that you'll continue to be with them, protect them, and just continue to encourage their hearts as they are away from home, Lord. Just be with them, Lord. And we just pray, Father God, we also remember, Lord, uh, in our bulena, our pastors and wives who have been infected or who have been affected by them. By the uh, virus, Lord, we also continue to remember and lift them up in prayer. We thank you for your healing over them, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We remember, Lord, this morning, missionaries and ministers all across the globe, Father God, that you'll continue to give them fresh new anointing, Lord, for this time, Father God. We, uh, we praise you and we, we thank you, Father God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We ask all these things in your precious name, Jesus. And everybody say, amen. amen, amen. If you're happy in the Lord this morning, shout amen. amen. If you love Jesus, shout hallelujah. 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 It's so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's such a joy to see each and every one of you this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So um, this, this morning, or actually over the weekend, um, I, I had read a post about fear. And... Um, it says, fear has two meanings. Everybody spell out fear with me together. Ready? One, two, three. F-E-A-R. Okay, so fear, the acronym that I saw was face everything and run. That's the first meaning. The second meaning is face everything and rise. Hallelujah. I believe, church, that God, God has called us for just such a time as this to rise. Amen? Not to run, but to face everything and rise. Amen? This weekend, 
mua Fia ngai ma mea uma, ma tamoi. Ao o mai whangata, ma buabunga. Sometimes the, 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 the easiest thing to do is run, ah, tamoi. But the other meaning, fia ngai ma mea uma, ma tu lai. Amen. Believe that God has called us, church, tu lai. Amen. Nei la tai au, ma lo tato tu lai mai nei tai au. Tato pe pese mai pese nei finau. And as we sing this morning, let's just rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Because he has not given us a spirit of fear. Amen. We are victorious in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless you, church.
Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we just feel your spirit in this place. We feel you in this parking lot. Father, as we just enjoy your blessings, we enjoy this day. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is here, bringing that peace and comfort that we need. Just as that song we just heard, we're not alone. We're never alone. You're always with us. Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Lord, you're always there with us, holding our hand. Your rod and your staff, they help us along. And Father, we thank you for this opportunity, not only to come to worship you, but to give you our thanksgiving, but also to hear your word this morning. When, the, when all is said and done, may all the glory and honor be to you and you alone. Amen. Love the Lord, say amen. amen. If you love the Lord even more, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. We want to welcome you here in the name of Jesus. We want to welcome you here in the name of Jesus. We're so glad that you're here worshiping with us. Those that are, are, are visiting with us, my brother and family here, thank you for visiting with us today. Uh, for our uh, church, Amen. God bless all of you. And uh, thank you, worship team. And also, we want to say uh, welcome to those who, those who are viewing us through the internet on our Facebook page. God bless you. And if you would do us a favor, if you enjoyed the service, could you just do one of those things called emoji? Whatever emoji you want to pick, just throw it on there and just give us a, a wave so we'll know. You know, but I want to say that uh, God is good. Amen? Amen? God is good in so many ways. Amen. God is always good. No matter what we're going through, the faithfulness is God, the blessings of God is always available to us. And this morning, I'm not going to hold you here hostage for a long time. <laughs> Short sermon, amen. Um, but isn't it a great to be outdoors? To enjoy the sun of Southern California. It's nice and sunny, but not too hot. So since we're outside, I just brought one paper for us to listen to. I usually bring a, a, a thick stack of paper, but if I do, then I just become like long-winded. But today, we're going to be short. I'm going to share with you a, a passage or a story of Elijah. And we know the story of Elijah. We know who Elijah is. He's a prophet in the Old Testament. So this morning I'd like to read from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19. I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to read some, some things that we'll talk about, and then we'll go from there. Is that okay? Amen. Say amen. amen. And it gets too long, just shout amen, and we'll end. Amen. <laughs> I'm not saying amen right now anyway. <laughs> so let's leave. Uh, and I'll start from verse 9. Or actually, yes, from verse 9. Then there went, then he went into a cave and spent the night there. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied. I had been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. 
The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Verse 11, the Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountain apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very zealous for the Lord, for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you go there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Anishim, king over Israel. And anoint Elijah, son of Shaphat, from that town there to succeed you as his prophet. We just, uh, if you read the story, you'll know that in the previous chapter, Elijah was on the mountain called Mount Carmel. Ile, Ile, chapters, Wumuele, chapter Leo Tato Yai, Tato, it's a fight, Tawai. The miracle that God did for, El for Elijah on Mount Carmel. Elijah told uh, Ahab, King Ahab, when he met him, say, okay, the nation of Israel has gone away from God. But this is what I want you to do, King Ahab. Bring the people to Mount Carmel. And bring all the prophets of Baal. All the prophets of Jezebel, bring them to Mount Caramel and bring two cows, a cow for them and a cow for me. So the story goes that uh, uh, Elijah tells the prophets of Baal, okay, since there's many of you, go ahead and prepare your cow for a sacrifice to your gods. Give me time to prepare my cow. So they prepare their cow and they put it on the altar for their God to sacrifice. And Elijah said, go ahead and pray. Pray that the God, that your God will send down a fire to consume your, your sacrifice. The word of God says, They pray. And Elijah said, pray harder. Maybe he's on a trip. Pray harder. Maybe he's asleep. Pray harder. Maybe he's playing golf or something. Pray harder. And they kept praying and praying. And the word of God says they start to cut each other as their um, custom is. And they start to cut each other. And then Elijah said, all right, I'm ready. Put the cow on the altar. One of the reasons why Elijah had to be second is because they tore down the altar of God. Elijah had to prepare the altar again, put the cow on there, and put everything on there. And then the last thing Elijah said, now pour it, fill it with water. Now we know that water doesn't make a fire, right? But he's filled it with water. And the story goes that when Elijah prayed, fire came down from heaven consume everything and the word of God said and licked up every water that was on that altar Elijah just had one of those mountain experiences and how many of us like those mountain experiences 
We like to feel the power of God. We like to be on the mountain where God comes and meet us, where God comes and performs miracles. And then uh, Elijah tells King Ahab, Ahab, you better hop on your chariot and go back down to the city because yeah, it's, it's going to rain. And if you know the story, it hasn't rained in Israel for a long time. I Lord Atala will never let you for Um my team. For Yatu ya Elia ya 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 Apo Alu la la so for Um lo kaliot Alu la Asia. It's about to rain, and I like that song that we sang this morning. Send down the rain. Send down the rain, and the story says Tatalo Elia. The windows of heaven opened. The rain came down. And then the miracle, and then another miracle there is uh, Ahab jumped in his uh, chariot and, and went down to the hill. But the story said that Elijah he uh, girded up his 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 ear faikana because he used to wear ear faikana back then, <laughs> like the skirt that we wear. So he was wearing one. He tied it together, and the, and the word of God says that he ran and he ran so fast that he passed King Ahab. Uh, what an experience. Could you imagine being on that mountain and God sends down the fire and consumes our sacrifice? That would change, change you. If you didn't believe in God, I bet you would believe in God then. Amen. But then we get to chapter 19 because this is where we're at this morning. And at the beginning of the chapter, Ahab goes home, and who's waiting in the palace for King Ahab? His lovely wife, Jezebel. And Ahab tells Jezebel everything that Elijah done, how the sacrifice happened, how Elijah killed all the 450 prophets of Baal and all the other prophets, Kill them all. Well, Jezebel was bad. Uh, but when he could have fingered, when he could have fingered the Kamalua, he all knew my town. The lady had looked with the Kamalua and Laku Fale, the way he come and figure, whatever he had. The Laku Fale looked for fair for me, I don't know. What is it with women, right? I'm not saying that women are bad, but Jezebel was a bad woman, right? I know there ain't no Jezebels here. And if you have that spirit of Jezebel, please let us pray for you before you go home today. Jezebel says, send this message to that guy, Elijah. Tell him before this day is over, I'm going to do to him what he did to the prophets. Now here's the man of God that just came from a God experience upon the mountain and he comes down and he hears what this Jezebel woman says and the Bible says that he was afraid. And he got up and he left. And he went somewhere in the desert on his way to Damascus. And why did he leave? Fifi. Uh, Oh, sorry, honey. So sorry. Won't be late coming from church again. But Jezebel put fear in, in uh, Elijah's heart. And the word of God says that Elijah ran away. Notice he just came from a mountain experience. It just goes to show that whatever miracle that's happening, if God is not your heart, in your heart, after that miracle, it's all done. The miracle is to change you. Now, I don't know because Elijah, his faith was pretty, pretty awesome. Because the Bible says there was only two people that was taken to heaven. For my talent to spare you, to rua lava tangata. Nave ola ina de lahi. Or tashi leo tangata. <laughs> Just two people taking a life to heaven. This was one of them. This was one of the guy, Elijah. 
The other one was Enoch. And you gotta be really, you know, to be taken to heaven without dying. You gotta, I mean, we had some good people. Billy Graham, he had to die to go to heaven. But this guy here, God wanted him in heaven so much. It goes to show that no matter how you think you're powerful, there's always room for improvement. Say amen. No matter how much you think you're powerful, there's always room for improvement. Say amen. When he heard the woman say, I'm going to kill you, the word of God says, he ran with fear. Sometimes we have this fear that causes us to, to, be, to be doubtful. An unbelieving fear, which causes us to have unbelieving faith. But I want to remind you today that whatever you're going through, hold on to the faith. Yes. Hold on to your belief in God. Amen. Remember what God did on Mount Carmel. But the two are men of fire, the two are more oil and nothing. I will find a loin. Love and follow, love and now, my little mafua, I'm gonna say, I live for Israel. Israelites had a hard time remembering. But the word of God tells them, and make sure you tell my stories from one generation to the next generation. Why? Because some generations forget. I'm not talking bad about this generation that we're in, but I think a lot of them have forgotten what God has done. And a lot of them have forgotten what this nation was founded on. If we forget God, and we don't tell what God did, we will forget also. And when we forget, we will doubt our faith. But it's in God we trust. Why do we trust God? Because we've seen what God can do on Mount Caramel. We've seen what God can do in your life. Some of you didn't come from good families. Some of you came from broken families. Some of you came from drugs and alcohol and this and that. But God has changed your life. And I'm here to remind you, remember that. Because when you don't remember, you're going to walk away from God. And then you run. I like what Pastor Grace said. Fear. Face everything and what? And run. <laughs> What was that, Grace? And rise. But don't do like Elijah. He faced Jezebel and he ran. God is saying, don't run. Don't run. When the enemy comes after you, don't run. Stand your ground. Pull out your sword of the spirit and say, come on. I got something for you. Say amen. amen. I got something for those 450 prophets. I got something for you, devil. And that's the word of God. So even Elijah had weaknesses. And maybe we have this weakness of uh, unbelieving faith. Of a weak faith. That when things happen, sui malo kalama. Awa lo o mai me fangata e manatu lo o le sui foi le fa fai o le nei aiga sa fa fai mo mo le chua le ai. O me fanga wenga a awa te sui el bokalama le chua. God is faithful to you. Whenever we're struggling, whenever we run into a Jezebel. Whenever we hear a news that somebody is after you, God is right there. And we'll see it the, as we go through this story this morning. Jezebel said, Elijah, may God, my God do unto me if I don't do unto you what you did unto those prophets. 
مي قلق اهليها يا فايل شوية تعب يا فايل تلي فاشيو تي اويا لي يوم لحسن The second thing that Elijah went through, he had struggle with his faith. But then he became impatient. How many times have we become impatient with struggles that we go through? I mean, sometimes we can't help it. Because we live in an instant society, we want things now. We want to pray right now. After church, the answer is already waiting for you at home. Amen. It's in Manao, you're more time to take me name. We don't want to face hardship too long. Lord, I have faced this hardship, but please send the answer. Send the answer before the church service is over. But God had to teach Elijah, Elijah. He asked him this question that I asked you this morning. What are you doing here? What are you doing here, Elijah? It was like a question. Uh, I mean, God knows everything. But it was a question on the facility. It was sort of like a question. You have something to do, but what are you doing here? Did I summon you here? Did I call for you to come here? Because he told, he went to Jezreel. He went to the city. But all of a sudden, why are you going to the mountain of God. This is the same mountain that Moses received the Ten Commandments from. Mount Sinai, Mount Horeb, and Elisha knew enough that when things are bad, run to the mountain of God. But listen to the question that God asked Elisha. What are you doing here? I know this is my mountain, but what are you doing here? Sometimes when we ask God for something and we come again, right behind, we ask again, maybe God is trying to say to you, why are you bringing that up again? Why are you asking again? Because maybe God gave you an answer, but you didn't like the answer. And you want God to change everything. But let me tell you this morning that God don't change everything because you want it to change. God changed everything because that's his will. It wasn't the will of God for, for Elijah to go to Mount Horeb or go to Mount Sinai. It was the will of God for Elijah to stay in the city. But he changed the plans because of what was at hand. How many times when we are down and out, where do you run? Straight to God, a good place to go. When it's difficult, what do we do? On our knees, Lord, 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 help me. But sometimes maybe God wants you there because there's a reason wants you, he wants you to stay there. I don't know why God allows difficult things for us to go through. I don't know why this world is going crazy. All the chaos. Because some of the things is just like, I can't believe that they're thinking that way. I can't believe that they want to burn Bibles. What did the Bible have to do with that? I can't believe that they don't want us to see in churches no more. That we have to be out here. But maybe God is trying to teach the church something. Say amen, church. Maybe God is trying to teach us something. Because for so long we've enjoyed blessing after blessing, mountaintop experience after mountaintop experience. There's always a revival over there that we go revive ourselves. There's always a conference there that we go and, and receive and receive. But God is probably saying it's time for survival mode. 
We've been comfortable for so long that we wouldn't even know how to survive if there was nothing, if there was nothing but what God has given you already. But maybe God is preparing the church to say, church, hard times are coming. And we can't get away from that. The Bible says that at the end, if you think this is hard now, wait till the tribulation come. If you're still here, it's going to be a difficult time. But we're moving into that direction where blessings are not coming easy. Well, you have to really have put your faith and trust in God for your children, for your family, for your mom and dad, for all your family that surrounds you. Because if you don't stand on your faith and they're not Christian, where will they stand? But you and I as Christians, we got to say, Lord, I'm here for this reason. So the story goes, our passage goes that, that uh, Elijah goes to Mount Sinai, to the mountain of God, and God tells him, Elijah, what are you doing here? And then God said, go stand at the edge of the cave. And the wind came and everything, the wind just brought damage to everything. But the word of God said God wasn't in that wind. The earthquake came and, and it shook the ground. The word of God said that God wasn't in the earthquake. The fire came, that God wasn't in the fire. That's just uh, the destruction that we're going through. Don't worry about that. Because at the end it says, but a small, still voice. And Elijah heard this. And it says when Elijah heard the voice of God, you know what's trying to drown out the voice of God is the things that are terrible. Sometimes the Bible uses terrible, like a terrible storm, a terrible earthquake, things that shake things that are not necessarily the acts of God. Other things that, 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 that causes you to, to not hear God, it's what has shaken your lives. If you want to hear God, you got to be in tune with God. If you want to hear God, you got to listen well. You got to drown out all the other voices so the voice of God can be heard so that you can uh, 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 differentiate what God's voice is and the voice of the enemy. Because the devil is a good copycat. He tries to imitate the things of the Lord. Unless we are wise to that, we might think that that's godly. We might think that that's okay. Because now we're living in a time where it's okay, the good things are okay, and I mean the bad things are okay, and the good things are bad. Loving God is bad, but doing evil is good. I was watching on Facebook, there was this family that was going to church, and these were protesters in front of the church, and they were, and the, and the, and the woman took their kids in the church, and they wanted the woman to bring the kids back out. Said, that's not a house of God. Bring the kids out. And that's what they chanted. And then the, the deacons and the men came and stood at the edge of the steps of the church and would not let them in. But they wanted to go in the church. That made me so mad. And I said, man, I wish they would come to our church. <laughs> so we could pray for them. But you see how the world is doing? The world is, is this messed up place right now. Our nation is in a turmoil. I don't know if it's because of the election year, but I don't know. But I know one thing that the word of God says, the worst is yet to come. The, the worst is yet to come. If you read the book of Revelations, there are some tribulations there. I said, now that's bad. 
that's bad. And I don't know where America stands in the end times. But I want the Christian to know where you should stand. You should stand with God. You should stand on the faith. You should not stand on your doubts. You should not stand because you're not sure. You need to be sure that your faith in God is solidified, is stronger than anything that can ever come your way. And the only way you can do that is you read his word and you pray and ask the spirit to come and strengthen us. Say amen. amen. Another thing that, that uh, Elijah was having a difficult time with, he was trying to justify himself. The Lord said, what are you doing here? And his answer is, I was so zealous for you. I did everything for you. I killed those 450 prophets. I called out fire from heaven. And he tells you, you know what, God? But the nation of Israel, they've thrown your altars down. They're not keeping the covenant. They're backslidden. And he was upset. He was just trying to tell God how religious he was. How many times we want to make ourselves look better than the other person? Like that person that stood in the temple and said, thank you, Lord, that I'm not like that guy. I tithe every Sunday. But God is saying, hey, I don't need your self-righteousness. Well, stop trying to justify yourself. Well, love alone for I'm your tunu. It's how uh love alone for I'm your tunu. I have your tunu law. Stop trying to justify how faithful you are, how good you are, but receive the grace of God because without Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus, none of us can stand in front of this powerful, righteous God that we serve. God let uh, Elijah ramble on. Lord, this is what I did for you. You know the Bible says in the, in the gospel, in the book of Matthew, that on that day they're going to come and say, Lord, Lord, it was your name that we did miracles. It was your name that we drove out demons. And Jesus said, go away from me. I don't even know who you are. Right? But God is saying, stop trying to be righteous, self-righteous, and justify yourself. But let the grace of God move in you. And the other thing, let the grace of God move in others. We want the grace of God for ourselves, but sometimes we don't want to extend it to others. And we look at them and say, man, how many times have that guy backslidden? He's still struggling with that. That's none of your business. None of your business. The other person and God. They ain't so fit out. Say too low. Ah. For my amen. don't worry about everybody else that's in church don't worry if so and so came to church this Sunday no worry about you Lord am I okay because Elijah forgot to ask that question to God or to say that to God God you know why I'm here God knows why we're here. I want to ask you that question this morning. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? Why are you here? Because that's what God asked Elijah. Elijah, why are you here? Many of us are here for many reasons. Some of us are here because this is our routine. This is our home church. Some of us decided to come to this church this morning because you had a choice. 
You can watch it online or be here. And some of you that are watching decided to stay home. That's okay. As long as you're in church. But sometimes we need to sit down, look that person in the mirror and say, Lord, what is that guy in the mirror doing? What am I hearing? There's two lessons we can learn from Elijah. Actually, more than two. But here are some things that we can learn. Is be willing to change. The story says that God told Elijah, there's not just you that's left. There's over 7,000 people that's following me. People that have not bowed down to Baal, have not kissed the idol. 7,000. And this is what I want you to do, Elijah. I want you to go back where you came from. Some of us have left wherever you wanted to leave because you were not comfortable there, but God is telling you, hey, go back there. Go back there. And it said that route was on the way to Damascus. I don't know why he mentioned Damascus, but you remember who converted at Damascus? It was Saul. Saul went to the road in Damascus and met God. But here's the mission for Elijah. And maybe God's giving you a mission this morning. Change your program. Change your ways. And God says, go back. And here's what you need to go. Go and anoint this person, this person, this person. The story goes that God, that Elijah only got to anoint Elisha. But you know what? Elisha, he was a double portion of Elijah. See, everything that you go through, there's for a reason. And sometimes God saved you to save someone else. Sometimes God allows you to go through that because someone else is going to go through what you went through and you can tell them, you can get over this. You can overcome that. Because that's how God operates. So he goes back and he does what the Lord tells him to do. And you know the rest of the story. Elisha is called, and Elijah is taken up to heaven. And before he's taken up to heaven, Elisha says, Elijah, give me what you have. That is a reminder for us that what you have, we need to give it to the world. That the Jesus that saved you, you need to give that same Jesus to the world that is struggling, to the world that's in chaos. It's time for you and I to say, Lord, I'm here for some new orders. I'm here because I want to hear what you want me to do. And if you already know what God is, wants you to do, stop running from that. Go back to that. Do what God has called you to do. Each and every one of us are called by God. He formed us. He knew us. And Jeremiah says, I have a plan for you. Whatever that plan is, don't run from that plan. Don't run, don't run from that plan. Because God's going to catch you. As fast as this guy was, this guy was fast. How many of you can outrun the horse? I don't think any of you can outrun the horse. Maybe I'll be right behind the horse, right? But not even Hussein Bolt can outrun the horse. But God wants you. To relook at how things are in your life. Relook at how things are in your family. Say, Lord, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of not doing what you say for me to do. Can you help me today? Answer the call that you laid upon my life. Help me today. Send me to who you want me to go to. And let me share the word of God. Let me share the gospel with you. Shall we stand? As we stand and as you close your eyes and think about the word of God this morning, and just say, Lord, what is it? Because that's what God is asking you today. Maybe not why are you here today, but why are you in that place of your life that you're in today? That moment in time right now, maybe God has said, why are you here in this moment of your life and what are you doing? And as we sing the song, think about that. And with your eyes closed, and just say, Lord, help me. 
Help me to understand what you need me to understand. Help me to hear what this word is this for me. And just pray before we pray together. Worship team, can we sing a song? you by the internet this morning if you would just slip your hand right from where you're at God hears you from right where you're at whether you're at work at home or here at church let God speak to your heart this morning let's pray together father I pray for those Lord that maybe came to church this morning with a heavy heart that maybe have a need that they need for you to address father I pray that you reach down and touch their hearts this morning we also pray for those that are watching by Facebook. Whatever the need they bring to you, Lord God, you alone have the answers to all our needs. We pray that you would meet their need. Father, I pray that you give them peace and comfort. Give them the joy, the joy from you, Lord God. Father, we continue to remember our world the way that it is. Lord, that you would come and give us relief from this virus. Father, we remember those Marines and that Seder that lost their lives. We pray this morning for their families, that your peace and comfort would just uh, come upon them, Lord God. Lord, I pray for all the sick that are in our church and those that are our friends that may be been affected by the coronavirus. Lord, we pray your healing for them. I pray your blessing upon all that is here. Protect them and watch over them. As they go through this next week, Lord God, Lord, may you speak to their hearts. May you establish their faith. May they trust you, Lord God, with everything. 
May they surrender their heart totally to you. Father, we thank you. Lord, we also ask right now, Lord, that you would bless the offering that they gave this morning. And those that give online, Lord God, to support our ministry, Lord, pour out your blessing upon them. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness to us. And we give you all the praise and the glory. And all the saints of God say amen. God bless you. Go in peace and not in pieces. Amen. God bless you. And if you have offering, we already...